Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, uh, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at uh, how we'll be looking at a small example on how to uh, in introduce module introduce global variables inside a program. First, that's the first objective. Second objective, we'll be using GNU plot to give us a given animation as and when you compute data. And third of all, and third and third to explain to ex to, uh, to explain these two concepts simultaneously what we'll be using is that we'll be using the linear we'll be trying to solve the linear advection equation using the forward time backwards backwards space finite difference scheme okay uh, uh, to do all the processes okay now it's kind of a three big three objective kind of a job but it's uh, but it's not it's not that difficult i'll walk you guys through over here so what I, what will what will be going to do is that i'll be taking that linear advection equation for those of you guys who haven't know what linear advic advection equation is uh, it's uh, uh, ultimate simplification of uh, it's one of the ultimate simplifications of you know Na navier stokes equation wherein you will have the derivative of time the, the velocity derivative of time okay uh, plus uh, con a constant velocity times the derivative, uh, the gradient of velocity equals zero. Okay, they, ra they write it as dou u by dou t plus u dou u by dou x equals zero. Okay, uh, or sometimes you know if this, uh, yeah, I mean sometimes you know uh, you this they call it as one dimensional uh, one dimensional ad linear advection equation also. Okay, uh, if we were to solve this using forward time backward scheme, okay. Then, uh, I mean, uh, these equations have a lot of solutions, but uh, there is this one easy uh, uh, solution using numerical method, and for that, I'm using a finite difference scheme, and uh, that finite difference scheme, uh, is, uh, that finite scheme difference scheme is actually forward time backward space. Okay, for those of you guys who don't know, I recommend you just check this in wiki. But I, I promise you, it's not a very difficult thing. It's not a very difficult thing. What we'll be doing is that we'll be using the time, we'll be using the values of uh, the velocities in the previous time step. Okay. Suppose if I want to calculate the velocity at, uh, you know, the current time step. Okay. Let's say at t equals times t equals one second. Okay. Then what I'll be doing is that uh, if I if I devise the uh, scheme properly, then I'll be using the values uh, in the previous time step. With the previous time t equals zero uh, to get the values velocities at velocities at this current step, and if I get the velocities at uh, this current step right, right, then I can use these values to uh, I can use these values to find the velocity in the next time step, next time step, and so on. It just goes this scheme just goes on. Okay. Now what I have here is that I have a module module called as global because. Because uh, uh, this, in this, if you want to declare any real value, any numbers or uh, arrays, not arrays, if you want to declare any values as global variable, then it's not possible directly in Fortran. Instead, you can define a module, a, sm a small module on the top, and define all the variables into it, and you can make it global to everyone using this option save. Okay. Uh, using this option save and uh, to import this module type use module in the program simple as that when when this is done because of the, because of the save program okay whichever program or subroutine or function or uh, even another module whichever module that uh, alters u okay u or uh, x here they uh, that uh, alteration is replicated or reflected in all the programs uh, i mean all the file all the subroutines Suppose if I were to mod change these two values in uh, pro this program LIE, it will get reflected in the subroutine also in the next subroutines which use this module and even in the function that use this module. So it so and also this makes these variables common to all the program subroutines whichever use this use on use global subroot use global statement. Okay, I defined two parameters namely r max equals thousand and c max equals thousand meaning the number of rows to be thousand and the uh, maximum number of rows to be thousand and maximum of the number of columns to be thousand and i'm setting the dimension to be ranging from zero to r max zero to c max so it's a thousand and one cross thousand one matrix u 
which is which I've set everything to be zero, and then I have a thousand row, a thousand column one D matrix whose values range from whose index range from zero to thousand, which is x. Okay, and this being done, this is where the mo thing comes into picture. I defined a parameter pi. L is for the length of a length of the domain. C is for the velocity with which a wave is going to travel. Okay. In our program, in this program, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take a sinusoid, a sine wave. Okay. And I'm going to place this sine wave in a dis in a length of thousand me no, thousand meters. Okay. Thousand meters. And I'm going to make this wave move forward using this linear advection equation. And I integrate this linear advection equation with respect to time because of this non-zero velocity two. To it will be moving at two meter per second towards the right hand side. Towards the right hand side. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Now, uh, with that being said, uh, this integration will happen for thousand seconds. Will happen for thousand seconds. Uh, okay. And uh, there's a CFL value. There's a specific thing called a CFL value. I come. Up, I'll come to that. And the time step will be one. I mean, I'll I'll be integrating with for every one second. And then the space step is four seconds, meaning uh, for four meters, meaning at uh, the distance between two points, I'm going to take. I mean, I cannot take this entire domain continuously, so I have to break this domain into small finite points in between. So I am taking the distance between two points to be four meters. Okay, and these are some iteration variables, nothing. Now SP that stands for the number of space points. Okay, and this is equal to the total length divided by the to, uh, total length divide. Uh, I mean, spa not space points, space sections, whichever you can call it. This is equal to the total length divided by the number divided by the num uh, small sections. So if we have, so if we have uh, the, so what what will this do? This will just calculate the number of sections sections in the length, uh, and uh, that will be uh, stored here. And then this line t by del t will store the number of time sections. Number time gap between time ga lag between two number of time uh, steps it will take from uh, between two uh, number of time steps number of time jumps it'll, this this is for the number of time jumps CFL is a kind of a stability criteria I mean for this numerical it's a finite difference scheme wherein um, if the CFL is kind of one or something of more than one the pro the code is unstable if it is 0.5 or uh, something below that it, the code is stable. I uh, mean this linear advection equation code that is. I mean this linear advection equation code that is. Okay, I'm just defining a small format here, and what I'm doing is that I'm setting the values of x to range from zero to l. Okay, but the way I defined ss div, uh, S, uh, dx here is such that is such that it'll just multiply. It'll just increment the value of x in in steps of one, four, in steps of four. So it'll be zero, four, eight, sixteen. Sorry, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, so on and so forth till 1000. Okay, here I set the corresponding sign value, corresponding sign value, and I used 2 pi dx by L into SS so that uh, it, the value ranges from 0 to 0 between the length. So you'll have one big sine wave occupying the entire 1000 units, 1000 units uh, uh, length, 1000 units length, let's say, 1000 units length domain. And then this is where I'm going to do the uh, linear advection scheme. Linear advection scheme here. Uh, this is the main pro. Uh, since the zero, the zero is actually that the zero the time step, the initial time initial condition, and that is what I'm setting over here and here. So from time one one to t p, okay, from the first value to the la from the first value to the first second to the last second, okay, I'm going to uh, first second to the thousand second. I'm going to integrate here. I'll come to this point, this one later, and what I'm doing is that I'm just updating each and every space point, okay? And uh, when and I have to update with every time step, I have to update with every point yeah, along the line, along the. Uh, I have to update every point. So what I'm doing is that uh, from the first, from the second, from the second point actually, from the, from the second point to the last last point, I'm updating all the values. Yeah, I'm integ I mean. Numerically, uh, uh, numerically, it's increasing the value, for ma time matching the value using this formula over here. Uh, you don't have, you guys don't have to worry about the formula. Just uh, like if you use this, if you guys are aware of power time backwards backwards phase finite difference scheme, 
and if I, and you can get this formula and if you guys are unsure as to how I got it or if you don't understand just check in wiki video or some other place you will get the formula nicely but it's not a difficult one it's a very very simple formula okay a simple formula i'm just taking the uh, i'm just it's a simple formula and then i'll explain you guys this part over here what i'm doing is that i'm taking the the last well the last point in the in the zeroth time step the last point in the previous time step i mean the point at uh, the length is 1000 okay i mean the end point of the wave in the previous time step i'm saving it this in time one and what i'm doing here is that i'm setting the uh, the starting point of the current time step to be this value okay uh, or else what or else what will happen is that when this uh, wave if this is not taken into consideration the wave will be uh, the wave will be you know uh, integ the wave will be in, uh, you'll be time matching and the wave will be moving towards from left to right left to right and when this condition when this kind of a thing is not put what will happen is that what, what will happen is that it will move from left to right and on the right left hand side it will be filling with zeros and ultimately after a point when the le wave leaves the domain it will just full of zeros so instead what i'm doing is that i'm just uh, connecting the last point to the first point there way what will happen is it will just con there's a continuous flow of sine waves from one end to the other okay and that's about this that's about this scheme uh, and I had written a separate do loop. I could have written this both in one shot, but uh, anyway, I thought I I wanted to include the first part also. So I think more nothing nothing important of that. What I'm doing is that in this do loop, the stick in the beginning, it starts from zero to TP. This time I'm including even the initial first value of the matrix U. Okay, I'm starting a file. Okay, with uh, ID unit ID one, and the file name is data dot txt. Okay, and uh, I'm writing each and every okay and this uh, and under uh, i'm writing each and every data point each and every data point in space from from uh, x equals zero to x equals thousand okay and the corresponding uh, velocity values velocity, velocity values correspond to that particular time step in each and every line and i'm proceeding with it for each and every point okay and then when the, and the entire thing is written and this Dulu book gets over and it prints all the 250 points in a 250 points and then the close command cl close command closes the file and then I'm calling in, I'm using a si the system module there's a system module in Fortran from which through which you can you can use this to call uh, shell functions shell scripts or uh, shell fun shell commands in uh, the shell okay or bash okay we we'll, we are using this system command to call the call this already written file called as ginu plot uh, plot underscore space plot underscore lae you're using ginu plot to plot this file okay and then uh, i kind of commented this but if this if we're using this we can delete all the text files if, the, if there are any and then i'm closing the file okay and now let's go to this plot underscore la dot gnu it's nothing just a simple plot just a simple one line ginu plot script okay if you guys don't know what GNU plot is, I recommend you go and check my uh, previous tutorial. I mean, I mean not, not pre previous tutorial, the tutorial in my basic series. I would have a uh, basic series of Fortran. I would have mentioned about this GNU plot slightly. It's a kind of a plotting soft plotting uh, software made plotting program made for uh, you know made for uh, Linux and from the G from the GNU from GNU family and. Uh, Ginu family, so uh, it's it's quite nice and useful, and it kind of works very nicely from sh from the terminal. So it's recommended to look at. So uh, I'm using that over here. I'm using that and that script. This this kind of syntax tells you to plot the first first column in the data to be row, and takes the second column to be col second column to be the y-axis. Column uh, first data to be the x-axis and the second data to be the second column value to be the y-axis and it just plots a script. I mean, just plots a pl gives a plot and as and when this plot this closes off. So what you'll get here, you'll get a flicker. You'll just get a flicker of the function. Okay. When that being done, okay, I just wrote a, sh a small shell script uh, to delete all the object files, smart files, executive files, and de text files, and then I'm compiling the fortran file in this line execute building in the fortran file in this line to produce an executable and then i'm running the executable here okay and uh, this file is 
already uh, made the already given uh, were already given permissions to execute so the shell script so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to run this okay simple f5 watch if you guys can see if you guys can see that the sign function is actually being plotted over here and it's it i apologize for the flicker that's the simple way i can make this work is that if you guys notice this there will this function will be moving from left to right in a, in a more or less in a nice nice pace and it will be plotting for like thousand time steps and uh, sometimes it may not come but you can definitely see that the entire sine wave is moving from left to right okay this is uh, that's the reason that's the speciality of linear advection equation it does nothing it just transports whatever condition you have uh, to from one end to the other end okay and this way if you see the sine wave is kind of getting preserved and is going towards the right and as and when the values go towards the uh, uh, right that value is being uh, taken to the left and then the wave continues on this is because of that uh, adjustment we did in the last time adjustment we did in the last time now uh, it is working it is printing nicely hopefully uh, let me see if i can push this on the side okay probably not okay probably not this will be working like this and this will be working like this and going on and uh, this will just go on for another two minute or minute or two but i don't want to bore you guys but this is kind of an example of how to use ginu plot how to use gin how to use ginu plot in uh, in uh, collaboration with uh, in assistance with uh, uh, fortran to get some nice little fancy plots okay that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial hope you guys like this tutorial uh, thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next tutorial see ya bye